Okay, so we're in section 9.4. Uh, we're going to talk about comparison of series. And um, I really like I really like these two tests because they I like the way that they that they make you think about the series and how how they're related to each other. Um, and to me, that's that's part of what's what's interesting and what's what's fun about series is is the way they make you think about numbers and functions and and how they compare and how they relate to each other. So the first one we're going to talk about is is um, probably the really the simplest idea, but often so, I'm not going to say often. Sometimes it's difficult to apply. The direct comparison te uh, test. And direct comparison is nice because you you. <coughs> demonstrate uh, an inequality, and you're done. You don't have to do anything else. So for the direct comparison test, we're going to say that um, 0 is less than or equal to a sub n less than or equal to b sub n for all n. So we're talking the terms of our series are positive here. Direct comparison test we can use in two ways. Uh, if our series for B sub n converges, then our series for A sub n converges. So term by term, our series, our, our uh, terms of our of our series for B sub n are larger, and the infinite series of B sub n converges, then the series A sub n converges, and then we can turn it around and work it the other direction. If some for A sub n diverges. then our series for B sub n diverges. So term by term we're comparing our series. The way I think about it is if our series term by term, if we have a convergent series and we're looking at another series, the convergent series kind of forces the, the series we're interested in to, to converge. And if we look the other way, if, this, if our series is above the divergent series, greater than the divergent series, then the divergent series can pushes, pushes the other series up, makes it diverge. And that's really the essence of the proof. Um, if for part one, if, if B sub n, if this converges, this places a, a, an upper bound on the sequence of partial sums for A sub n. And then, so we, so we, uh, so we have an upper bound, and so our sequence is non non um, non decreasing. So that that makes a sub n converge. The other way around, if oh I forgot my b sub n here, didn't I? Um, if it's the other way around, if a sub n the series for a sub n diverges, then it makes uh, the 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 sequence of partial sums for b sub n. Uh, unbounded. So, like it's a pretty easy idea. Sometimes difficult. Sometimes difficult to apply. But when we can apply it, it's nice, nice and quick. So let's look at a couple of examples with direct comparison, and we'll talk about our other test. <coughs> I wrote a sum instead of an e. Um, so we want the. We're looking at the sum n equals one to infinity of 1 over n times n plus 1, n plus 2. And all we want to do is test this for convergence. Well, what's, what's one way, if, without, without thinking about the direct comparison test, what, what could we do here? We could do partial fractions. 
uh, do, the, do the decomposition, write out the terms of our series, and see if, see if this converges, see if it has a, has a sum. We could, we could possibly find the sum. But all we're trying to do is decide if it converges or diverges. So I want to compare this with some series that I know either converges or diverges. So when I, when I use a direct comparison test, I think, what other series that I know about, what does this, what, what does this kind of look like? Anybody have an idea of what I would choose to compare this with? What would be your first guess? N cubed, because I have an N and an N and an N. So I can say compare with and I'm just going to write the sum. And how, how does this, term by term, how does this compare to, how does 1 over, I'm going to write this out, 1 over n, n plus 1, n plus 2, how does that compare with 1 over n to the third, term by term? Oh, it's less. We're dividing, we're dividing by a larger number, so we get a less, it's going to be less. And we're saying n is positive. So term by term, this is less. What do we know about this series? In conversion, what kind of series is this? So sum n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the third <coughs> converges. Because it's a p series. and p equals 3. So term by term, this series is less than a convergent series, so our original series converges. So we didn't have to do our partial fractions. We just had to pick, pick a decent series um, to compare with. So this is this, the denominator is similar is the same magnitude, same magnitude as 1 over n to the third. I'm just adding, adding a few things in there. I love using the direct comparison test in my family. I really, I, like I said, I really like the way it makes you think about, about the quantities and how they're related. And it also helps you, if, you're, if you think about using the direct comparison test, it can really help you think about, okay, what is a convergence series? What is a convergence series similar to this that I know? So it, it, it makes you, I think it, it helps you make connections um, between the different tests and the different types of series and how they work. All right. Let's look at another one. Um, we have the sum. N equals 1 to infinity of 1 over the square root of 2n minus 1. So, what would we what would we think of think of comparing this with? What does it kind of look like? <coughs> How about just forget this minus one? Compare with one over square root of two n. So term by term, one over square root of 2n minus 1, how does that compare with 1 over the square root of 2n? I have here 1 less than and 1 greater than. We're dividing by a smaller number, right? So it gets, so it's larger. So, and what do we know about, what do we know about the sum n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over square root of 2n? What kind of series is that? Is it a p-series? Yes. p-series with, and what's our p here? 
One half. So what does this series do? Diverge. So what does the series that we're looking at do? Term by term it's larger than a divergent <coughs> series. Our, our smaller term is diverging. And term by term, the one we're looking at is larger than that, so it has to diverge. And it just happened, just turned out that we were able to compare this. Both of these examples involved um, convergent P series. But we can, if we, we can compare to geometric series that we know convert any any series that is similar that we can make some kind of comparison to, and we can. We know we can prove this inequality. Sometimes proving that inequality is the difficult part. But if we if we can demonstrate this inequality, that's all all we have to do to test for convergence or divergence. So questions questions there. All right. Let's look at another series, and this will lead us into our into our next test. Um, I want to look at sum of n, n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over a n plus b. And this is called the general, general harmonic series. guess about this general harmonic series in terms of convergence or divergence? We would guess it diverges, right? Harmonic series, we know the harmonic series diverges. Can we compare this directly with the harmonic series? That's our that's our question here. I would like to be able to do that. So we want, we want to look at how does one over a n plus b uh, a and b are perhaps is right a and b are greater than zero. So we're, these are positive constants. We want to look at how does a n one over a n plus b compare with one over n. <coughs> Is that going to be larger or smaller term by term than 1 over n? <coughs> smaller. A harmonic series diverges. So my, my visual, the harmonic series is up here. The general harmonic series is down here. The harmonic series diverges. Does that tell us anything about the convergence to divergence that series? It could do all kinds of stuff. So we know the harmonic series. I'm just going to, I don't, I'm going to draw a shape. The harmonic series does this. The well, general harmonic series could do all kinds of things in between here and still end up diverging or converging. So this, this series is un, below is less than our, our divergent series, so our direct comparison test doesn't tell us anything. So this is less than. So we can't use my, the question to, the, the answer to our question, whoops, is no, we can't use direct comparison. So we can't draw a conclusion from direct comparison. But we have an idea that, that this should, should diverge. Well, there's another test that we, can, that we can use that will help us out in a situation like this, the limit comparison test. And the limit comparison test is nice because it comes down to finding a limit. 
So we're going to say that we're talking about a positive series again. A sub n is greater than zero and B sub n is greater than zero. <coughs> so we have a positive series. And we're going to look at the limit as n approaches infinity of A sub n over B sub n. <coughs> and this <coughs> limit is L. And we need L for this test. Is, has to be finite and positive. I'm just going to put it in F here. Then my series either both converge or diverge. And I'm just going to write A sub n. I'm not going to put my indices. So our limit comparison test, we just form the ratio of our, of our terms, take the limit as n approaches infinity. If that limit is finite and positive, then our series either both converge or diverge. Now there are some other conditions that you can, that you can use with the, with the limit comparison test. Um, what all we're going to do, and I'll, I'll really, the way that I look at the limit comparison test is just, just this, this portion of it. If a sub n, that tells us that a sub n and b sub n <coughs> either both converge or diverge. Mm -hmm. I, I think if you have to start getting into the other conditions that, that, that come in with the limit comparison test, it's probably better to use another test. Um, I think the other tests are easier to remember than those other, than those other parts of the limit comparison test. So what we're going to, for the limit comparison test, we just, for, we'll, we'll look at this general harmonic series. We think it, we think this general harmonic series should diverge, so we're going to we're going to look at the limit comparison test <coughs> on this general harmonic series. And before going, I just want to mention really quickly why the limit comparison test works. I'm not going to go through the entire proof, but it's 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 nice to see why why these things are working the way we say they're working. Um, so we're saying that if we have this limit. So we have this limit. Then by the definition of the limit, there's, there's some n, there's some number where we have um, 0 less than a sub n over b sub n less than um, some, some number. And so limit plus some some number. I'm just going to pick one. So there, by the definition of the limit, there's some number in such that this this condition holds. This is our definition of the limit. That we can pick some numbers so that this quantity is less than less than some something. This is bounded. <coughs> so using this inequality, zero is less than a sub n, which is less than this number that I picked, L plus 1, B sub n. So if B sub n converges, that forces A sub n to converge also. And this works with, this works with the other, going the other direction also. If A sub n, um, if A sub n diverges, then that's going to force B sub n diverge. So that's, that's really the idea. We have this limit. We're just using the definition of a limit. So the limit comparison test either forces our uh, series to be bounded or forces the other one that we're looking at to be unbounded. So let's look at this general harmonic series. We have an idea that it, it diverges. So we're going to look at the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over 
an plus b over 1 over n. <coughs> and I'm just going to rearrange that, the limit, as n approaches infinity, of n over an plus b. And what is that limit as n approaches infinity? One over a. We can use L'Hopital's. And our limit is one over a. A is positive. So is this finite and positive? Yes? So both of these series diverge. <coughs> just like we thought. Now, in, in general, everybody good with where we're at? Anybody, anybody have any questions? Good with limit comparison. Limit comparison test, usually, usually when I think of limit comparison test, you, um, it, it works really well for comparing uh, series that have uh, complicated alg algebraic terms, so powers, exponents, with, uh, with a p-series. And we want to choose a p-series with the same magnitude of nth terms. So, um, and then we can disregard all but the highest power of n. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. So that's usually when I'm, I'm thinking of using the um, limit comparison test is when we have some kind of messy algebraic uh, messy algebra. So we have the sum n equals 1 to infinity of 3n squared plus n over n to the fourth plus the square root of n. And we want to determine if this converges or diverges. And I, I would definitely call this messy. <coughs> so I want to, what I want to do is compare this with a p series. So the highest power in the numerator is two, and the highest power in the denominator is four. So I want to compare with. I'm saying this is similar to the sum, and I'm going to leave off my indices here, of n squared over n to the fourth, which is just 1 over n squared. And what do we know about the sum of 1 over n squared? Convergent or divergent? <coughs> Convergent because it is a p-series with p equals 2. So we know this converges. So I want to compare this series with this series. So I'm going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of 3n squared plus n over n to the fourth plus square root of n. And when I divide, I'm just going to write n squared over 1. And when I simplify this, the limit as n approaches infinity, what do I get here? Um, 3n to the 4th plus n to the 3rd over n to the 4th plus the square root of n. What is this limit? The limit as n approaches infinity is 3. How would we figure that out? Coefficients? Um, is this is technically a rational function? When we can look at the ratio of the leading coefficients, the square root of n technically makes it not a rational function. But you're on the right track. Um, 
what else? What what's another way if we if we didn't see that? What's another way we could do this? What would we do? Lopi tals. How many times do we have to do it? Four times. So we'd have to do lopi tals. Um, so this limit equals three. Finite and positive. So the series converges. Questions on questions on limit comparison. So direct comparison, direct comparison, we're just looking at can we find a series that our terms are the series that we're interested in is larger or smaller? What do we know about the convergence or divergence of a particular series? And use it that way. Uh, limit comparison. <coughs> um, Usually we use it with uh, messy, messy algebraic terms. Let's look at one more, one more example with limit comparison. So we're going to look at the sum, n equals one to infinity, of n, two to the n, over four n to the third plus one. I would definitely call this one messy. So what's the what's uh, what's our highest? If we're thinking of the powers of the numerator and denominator, what's our highest power in the numerator? What's what's contributing the most to the numerator? Is it n? Two to the n, right? So I'm I'm looking at something with the numerator. That has a magnitude two to the n, and in the denominator, what's our highest power? n cubed, but we have a factor of n in the numerator. So I would compare this with two to the n over n squared. Now, does this help us? What do we know about the sum of two to the n over n squared? Diverges because nth term test. Does it? They, so we look at this. The nth term does not approach zero. How would you figure that out? How would you figure out the limit as n approaches infinity of two to the n over n squared? What would you do here to to decide that this is not zero? We figure out this limit. Anyone? That's a good one. L'Hopital. And how many times would we have to apply it? Twice. Because when we take the derivative of 2 to the n, what do we get? It's an exponential function. So we get 2 to the n times times the natural log of 2. So we just get 2 to the n times a factor, times some factor. So every time we take the derivative in the numerator, we, we're left with 2 to the n times something else. We take the derivative down here uh, twice, and we get a constant. So the limit uh, of this is greater than 0. So we know this diverges. So this series diverges. So if we compare this with a divergent series, we would expect we're comparing with a divergent series, we would show that this series diverges. So we're going to look at the limit as n approaches infinity. We're thinking that this diverges now of n 2 to the n over 4 n cubed plus 1. Let me rewrite my 3 here. Times um, n squared over 2 to the n. And when I simplify that, I get limit as n approaches infinity 
of n to the third over 4n to the third plus 1. And this limit is <coughs> 1 fourth, which is finite and positive. So our original series diverges. Wait, if it was <coughs> not finite? Then your test fails. Right, and then you have to figure out something else. So it wouldn't be like a Right, no, then, then your test fails. <coughs> All right, questions? Okay, homework.